Hey YouTube, it's ICU, and today I'm going to show you guys how to downgrade from iOS 8.1.3 on any iPhone, iPad, or the fifth generation iPod Touch to iOS 8.1.2 and successfully achieve an untethered jailbreak via either Taiji or PP and reclaim the tweaks that were lost when you upgraded to iOS 8.1.3. All right, so to start off, before we get in and downgrade this fifth gen iPod from 8.1.3 to 8.1.2, I need to mention some things. First of all, you're only going to need your device, the corresponding iOS 8.1.2 IPSW or firmware file for your device, as well as a USB cable to actually plug into iTunes and perform the downgrade. However, it is crucial to mention that Apple will only allow restores for firmwares that are currently being signed. That means once Apple stops signing iOS 8.1.2, it will no longer be possible to downgrade from 8.1.3 to 8.1.2. And when that happens, I will put an annotation up on the screen right here because it's not a matter of if it will happen, but rather when. Apple will stop signing 8.1.2, whether it's today or a week from now. Again, just refer to the annotation. So view this video on the desktop version of YouTube. I will also have it mentioned down below in the more info. There will be a post and it will be listed there once Apple stops signing the firmware. Also, this part is absolutely paramount. You cannot restore from a backup that was created on a higher firmware. So meaning if you don't have a recent backup, you can't simply backup your device on 8.1.3, downgrade to 8.1.2, and then restore from your backup because iTunes blocks those type of backup restores. So that means you'll have to restore from a backup that was either created on 8.1.2 or earlier. If you don't have one, unfortunately, you'll just have to lose everything that you've done on your device from the most recent backup you actually have. So with that, that in mind and with that understood let's go ahead and continue with this tutorial you will need again iTunes downloaded as well as your IPSW there will be a link down below in the more info to a post on best tech info that does contain download links in a download section it's a very simple and unified section that's after the written portion of the tutorial and when you go to download the IPSW or firmware you will be redirected to this site it will have two drop downs the first one will just let you select your device so you can find it or you can type it in it's extremely simple I really recommend utilizing this website so let's say I have an iPhone 5c GSM model from there you simply select the iOS version or the firmware and you just click and download it however just note that once it turns red as you can see it is green right now along with iOS 8.1.3 that means it's no longer being signed so that's just another way to confirm whether or not 8.1.2 is being signed by Apple but as of today recording this video January 28th 2000 2015, Apple is signing iOS 8.1.2. So if I want to download the firmware, all I have to do is just click on it and then click on download. As you can see, it does verify that it is being signed right now. Now I already have my IPSW downloaded for my fifth generation iPod touch. It's very important that you download the proper IPSW because if it's still being signed and you encounter issues, I can guarantee you that it's because the IPSW was not successfully downloaded for your specific device. And with that said, let's go ahead and get straight into this tutorial. All you have to do is just plug your device into your computer via standard USB cable, either 30 pin or a lightning cable for the newer devices. And then launch iTunes. It doesn't matter if you're on a PC or a Mac. All right, and once iTunes is up, just go to your device screen. So at the top, select your device over on the left-hand side here, and then go to the summary screen. And we're actually going to do something manual here. What you need to do is hold down either Option or Option Alt if you're on a Mac or Shift on a Windows-based PC on your keyboard. Once you hold down either of those two keys, depending on which operating system and which computer you have, then you're going to left-click restore device. For me, it says iPod. For you, it will either say iPhone or iPad, depending. So let's go ahead and left-click it while holding down Option because, again, I am on a Mac. If you're on a PC, hold down Shift. And then from there, you will receive a window to browse for the firmware because mine's just on my desktop desktop, I can select it here. As you can see, it does indeed say 8.1.2. I'm just going to zoom in for you guys really quick to confirm. So again, like I said, iPod 5 comma 1 underscore 8.1.2. Let's go ahead and click on open. And then from there, I will receive a prompt 
asking me if I want to restore the iPod to 8.1.2. And because I do, I'm going to click on restore. I'm just going to zoom out here really quick and we're going to get started. So I'm clicking restore and I'm going to leave the iPod touch up on the screen now throughout the duration of the restore process. This will take some time. So you can definitely go ahead and skip this segment of the video. If you're on the desktop version of YouTube, there will be an annotation down below at the bottom that you can actually click to skip ahead. Head. For the rest of you, if you encounter issues or you want to see how long each stage takes, then you can watch this portion. But again, I recommend skipping it because you don't really need to watch this segment because I'm just going to be leaving the iPod up on the screen here throughout the duration of the process. Okay, as you can see, we do now have a bar on the bottom. The progress bar is slightly loading. Inside of iTunes, it says that it's restoring the iPod software. Let's go ahead and let it continue. And you may notice that the progress bars don't exactly align on your device as well as inside of iTunes. That's because the progress bar inside of iTunes is just for the current stage, whereas on your device, it's the overall progress of the entire process. So keep that in mind. Don't worry if the progress bars look like they're not in alignment. Now inside of iTunes, it's moved on to verifying iPod software and the entire process itself is just continuing. All right, now inside of iTunes, it's saying that it's verifying the iPod restore and it should come back up shortly. So let's go ahead and just wait for it.
and it's saying restoring iPod firmware again, and that should be the final step. Once it's done with that, which won't take nearly as long as the initial restoring iPod firmware stage, then it will reboot into the on-device setup process. So as you can see here inside of iTunes, it says that the iPod has been restored to factory settings and it's just going to reboot. So let's go ahead and wait for that. I'm also going to minimize iTunes here and we're going to continue with this video and I'm just going to set it up briefly after entering my Wi-Fi details and then confirm that this iPod Touch is indeed running iOS 8.1.3 too by going inside of the settings app like I did before the intro of this video where I showed you guys that it was indeed running 8.1.3. Now this process with the secondary progress bar at the bottom shouldn't take too long. It's just finalizing the restore on the device itself. All right, so as you can see, iTunes is up now and it's at the iPod setup screen. It's going to ask me if I wanna restore my device from a backup or set it up as a new device. Just set your device up as a new iPad, iPhone, or iPod, depending on what it is, and then jailbreak. Once you're jailbroken, you can come back to iTunes and restore from the latest backup you have on 8.1.2 or earlier. So keep that in mind. You're going to set it up as a new device before you actually jailbreak break. So once you do that, then you can go ahead and continue and set your device up on it itself. And then from there, you will be able to jailbreak successfully. All right, and I just skipped past the Wi-Fi details. Let's go ahead and continue. I'm going to disable location services, tap OK to that, and I'm going to skip the Apple ID step for now. So let's go ahead and tap on don't use. And then from there, let's just wait for it. And I'm going to tap on agree, and we're going to continue. And let's go ahead and continue. Again, I'm just setting this up as a clean device without any settings. All right, I'll be able to tap get started in just a second. Once I do, it'll place this at the home screen. I can launch settings and confirm that this iPod is indeed running 8.1.2. So inside of settings general about down below at the bottom for the version, it does state that this iPod touch is running iOS 8.1.2. So that means that now you can successfully jailbreak using either Taiji or PP depending on whether you have a Mac or a Windows-based PC. So this is where we want to be at, guys. We're on iOS 8.1.2 with the device that's been freshly restored and it doesn't have anything on it. Once you jailbreak, once you have Cydia and once it's reorganized the file system, you can then go back to iTunes and restore from the latest backup you have on iOS 8.1.2 or earlier. Now, I'm not going to go through the entire jailbreak process in this video. However, I will have them linked to both down below in the more info as well as on the screen in the outro to this video in annotation form if you're on the desktop version of YouTube. So just click the one that's relevant to you based on the type of computer you own. And with that said, I hope you guys like this video. I hope it helped you downgrade and keep in mind you can only downgrade to 8.1.2 if it's still being signed by Apple. And when it's no longer being signed, there will be an annotation up stating that. Again, if this video helped you guys downgrade, be sure to give it a thumbs up and leave a relevant comment down below in the comment section. And if you guys wanna be updated more often such as when I release new jailbreak update and tutorial videos for 8.1.3 and subsequent iOS releases if the developers opt to release a jailbreak for a firmware like 8.2 instead of 8.1.3 then just be sure to click on that subscribe button down below next to my channel name if you have yet to like me on Facebook and follow me on Twitter and until next time this is ICU signing out.